Hello friends and welcome to this video. We are with the seventh chapter titled as Wavelet Transformation. And here we are going to address the twelfth topic that it is orthogonality of complex exponential bases. So this is basically the discussion before start of the exact wavelet theory topics that is concerned to Fourier series from geometrical point of view. So here we are having a discussion in the relation to what we have in geometry basically the vector algebra the functional basis and based on to the use of these particular basis how any signal can be represented with this Fourier as a mathematical tool defined over a certain space here so in this regard after introduction to the chapter here we have the vector space orthogonality and orthonormality of the functions functional spaces the basis functions how to determine the coefficients of the Fourier representation and in addition to all this for the Fourier series we have just now learned the complex Fourier series that is an alternate representation of the Fourier series for the concerned signal having a certain advantages as discussed in the previous video so now let us address the checking of the orthogonality and the further orthonormality for the functional basis as we have used in the earlier representation so this is orthogonality of the complex exponential basis so let us begin with the topic <music> So here we start with our topic, the topic titled orthogonality of complex exponential basis here. Now in the previous video, we have seen the complex Fourier series. So thereupon we have represented f of t is equal to c suffix 0 added by c1 e to the power j omega t further added by c to the suffix minus 1 into e to the power minus j omega t and so on up to c suffix n e to the power j n omega t added by c suffix minus n into e to the power minus j n omega t here so thereupon the basis we can regard to 1 comma e to the power j omega t comma e to the power minus j omega t in this way up to e to the power j times n omega t comma e to the power minus j times n omega t here so these are orthogonal over the interval 0 to capital t so the capital t is the duration of the signal and this is the representation with the help of omega to be the angular frequency so the relation with the time period is that omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the time period capital t here now with respect to this particular representation while interpreting the condition of orthogonality and the projection of the function onto a complex function there it is a little bit of the difference here so for that purpose first of all let us have consideration of any general vector v bar that is expressed in terms of the coefficients a b c and the unit vectors i j k so v bar is equal to a into i added by b into j further added by c into k over the geometric space defined as r cube here so if we find out the norm or the normalization of the vector we obtain the magnitude so this magnitude is obtained by projecting the generalized representation of the vector notation onto itself so that we can denote as mod of capital v is nothing but square root of the dot multiplication of v bar vector with itself so we obtain square root of a square plus b square plus c square now this was with respect to the vector notations now we are having the complex Fourier series representation as we are dealing with a complex number Generally, the complex number is represented as 
z is equal to small a added by j times b so small a is the coefficient of the real part and small b is the coefficient of the imaginary part here so for determining or finding the magnitude we have to make a multiplication to this representation of complex number denoted by z so the multiplication is to be done by the corresponding complex conjugate of this number and then we have to find out the square root value here so as in case of the real function we have the integration f of t into f of t dt so for the complex functional representation so for example z of t here the normalization we can compute by carrying out the integration over the time interval t for z of t into the corresponding complex conjugate of z of t here it is shown with a bar over its head into dt here so the formulation for projection of a function onto a complex function here it is and we must have multiplication of the first function with the complex conjugate of the second function and then the integration is to be carried out here so keeping in this this point into the mind here we are proving the set of functions to be the orthogonal here the set of functions we have already listed 1 comma e to the power j omega t comma e to the power minus j omega t and this way in general e to the power j times n omega t e to the power minus j times n omega t here so let us denote the projection of the functional representation f1 of t onto f2 of t so in that case if we take the use of the functional basis as first of all the unit step function then the cosine function and then the sine function uh, let us divide the discussion in three cases here for the first case we take the signal u of t so this is the step signal that is why the magnitude is equal to 1 and here we are making the use of complex exponential e to the power j omega t the time duration it will be small t greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to the time period capital T omega is equal to 2 pi divided by capital T here so we have the notation 1 comma e to the power j omega t in these brackets is expressed as the time integral 0 to capital T 1 multiplied by the complex exponential of e to the power j omega t so we obtain integral 0 to capital T e to the power minus j omega t dt that is also equal to the integral 0 to capital T e to the power minus j times 2 pi t divided by capital T dt and this is equal to 0 now next to that let us talk about the complex exponential e to the power j times n into omega t and e to the power minus j times m into omega t here so here we consider n and m are the positive integers here so thereupon we represent the integration t is equal to 0 to capital t for e to the power j n omega t multiplied to the complex exponential of the second e to the power minus j into m omega t then dt so this is equal to the integral 0 to capital t e to the power j times in the bracket n plus m bracket is completed further multiplied to omega into t and then dt next to that we can get it to the form integral 0 to capital t e to the power j times n plus m multiplied to 2 pi by capital T further multiplied by small t outside the bracket dt now here it is also coming equal to 0 here and in the third situation where we have e to the power j n omega t along with e to the power j m omega t so n and m being either the positive integers or the negative integers whereas both are unequal so that time we can represent 
the integration t is equal to 0 to capital T for the multiplication of e to the power j n omega t with the complex exponential of the second representation e to the power j m omega t dt. So this is equal to integral 0 to capital T e to the power j times n minus m omega t dt also expressed to the form 0 to t the integration over e to the power j times n minus m multiplied to 2 pi divided by capital T bracket is completed and further multiplied to small t dt that also comes out to be equal to 0 here. So the three situations we have seen. So here we have to prove that the functions are orthogonal but the condition of orthonormality for the complex exponential functions is again a question here. So for the orthonormality as we have the integration t is equal to 0 to capital T for e to the power j n omega t with the complex exponential of e to the power j n omega t the same uh, complex exponential here dt that is equal to the integral 0 to capital T e to the power j times n minus n omega t dt. So this will become integral 0 to capital T 1 into dt and this integration will be left with the value capital T the complete time period here. Next to that we have the use of step function. So thereupon it will be the integral 0 to capital T or 1 into dt leading the value capital T. So as we are not obtaining in both of these cases the value on the RHS to be 1 the unit value here we can say that these functions are not satisfying the criteria of orthonormality here. So for getting them satisfying the requirement of orthonormality we have to make little bit of modification by scaling these particular functions here. So for both the unit function and the complex exponentials let us make the scaling by the constant under root 1 upon capital T. So we find the orthonormal basis. So here we have the set of orthonormal basis represented as the first value is under root 1 upon capital T. Second is under root 1 upon capital T. This is multiplied to the complex exponential e to the power j omega t. Next to that we have square root 1 divided by capital T e to the power minus j omega t. And this way we have in general square root 1 upon capital T e to the power j n omega t. And next to that we can have square root 1 upon capital T e to the power minus j times n into omega t here. So here if we have the representation of the signal into the space defined as L square for the functional basis here as satisfying the condition of orthogonality and orthonormality here. The representation of the signal f of t can be of this form where we write c sub x 0 dash multiplied to under root 1 by capital T u of t. This is the first term on the RHS further added to c1 dash under root 1 by capital T e to the power j omega t added to c sub x minus 1 dash under root 1 by capital T e to the power minus j omega t and this way up to c n dash square root 1 by capital T e to the power j n omega t further added to c sub x minus n c is provided dash over its head is multiplication to square root 1 by capital T e to the power minus j n omega t here. So for this particular representation as just now we have completed with the previous topic where we have seen the method of finding the coefficient. The particular coefficient we can determine by projecting the representation of f of t as this on the corresponding functional base here. So that is why we have c0 dash 
is equal to the integral 0 to capital T f of t multiplied by square root 1 by capital T multiplied to u of t dt whereas c and dash will be equal to the integral 0 to capital T f of t multiplied by the square root 1 upon capital T into e to the power minus j n omega t dt and c suffix minus n c is having provided dash in this representation and this is equal to the integral 0 to capital T f of t multiplied by square root 1 by capital T into e to the power minus j n omega t dt here. So this is what the representation that follows from the condition of orthonormality of the basis here. Now let us have the simplified representation of the expression by introducing the new constants here. So we can have c sub x 0 simply for c sub x 0 dash multiplied by the multiplicand under root of 1 upon capital T. So we get c 0 dash that is equal to the integral 0 to capital T for multiplication of f of t to square root of 1 by capital T u of t dt. So therefore c sub x 0 will be equal to square root of 1 by capital T first of all further multiplied to the integrator that is 0 to capital T f of t into square root of 1 upon capital T u of t dt that we can represent as 1 upon capital T f of t into u of t dt finally representing it 1 upon capital T integral 0 to capital T f of t dt here and in the similar fashion we can have the notations for simplicity capital C sub x n that is equal to the multiplication of 1 upon t in the square root to that of C n dash here. So this it becomes 1 upon capital T the integration 0 to capital T f of t into e to the power minus j n omega t dt and c sub x minus n will be the notation for c sub x minus n c is provided dash over the head multiplied to square root of 1 by capital T. So this is equal to 1 upon capital T integral 0 to capital T f of t e to the power j n omega t dt here. So here we are obtaining the complex Fourier series into the standard form by using these particular notations that is provided as f of t is expressed as c sub x 0 added by c1 into e to the power j omega t further added by c sub x minus 1 into e to the power minus j omega t and this way we have addition with the terms as like cn e to the power j n omega t further added to c sub x minus n into e to the power minus j n omega t here. So this is just completing the discussion on to the Fourier series from geometrical point of view here and by the next topic for getting switched into the understanding of wavelet theory topics first of all we shall discuss about the very important topic which is basically into the Fourier family but it has few of the features that is getting us from the family of Fourier tools to that of the family of wavelet tools here. The topic we shall be addressing with respect to the short time Fourier transformation there. First of all we shall be discussing the continuous type of the Fourier transform then continuous time frequency representations of the signal here and then short time Fourier transformation and then we will switch to understanding continuous type of the wavelet transform here. Thank you.